based on 
uh, the we in verse 24 uh, it says uh, we know this testimony is true in verse 24 it, it says we so they are saying it, it is different people who wrote this uh, but whatever uh, said and done Some people have defended that it is John's epilogue. Um, regardless of what, who wrote it, uh, John Brennan presents an important message for all who follow Jesus. The chapter completes John's gospel in a beautiful balance with this uh, prologue. Now let's see what happens in uh, the first part of it. Uh, and uh, afterwards, Jesus appeared to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, uh, also called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, 3 plus 2, 5, and two other disciples were together. They are not named. And uh, I'm going to, f Peter says, I'm going to fish. So they all said, We'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat that night. But that night, they caught nothing. They probably fished the whole night. They found nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Now, the seven disciples were there and uh, oh, we see Peter uh, taking the role of leadership. Peter, they, they all seem to follow him. And uh, why did Peter go for fishing? Because it, it was his occupation or because his choice, or because it was familiar activity. He wanted to do something familiar when he was uncertain about other things. We cannot know for sure, but the disciples waiting with him joined and went for fishing. But they found nothing. Peter's leadership and influence stood out among this group. They immediately boarded the boat along with Peter. But hours passed, but nothing happened. Early in the morning, the Bible says, Jesus stood out. It was for we read. And called out and he said, Do you have any fish? And he said, No. Then Jesus Jesus asked this question not to gain information but to prepare the disciples for his provision. He knows he's going to provide them with something. When they acknowledged the fruit, fruitless fishing, Jesus said, throw your night and nets on the right side of the boat. You will find some. Though they had not recognized Jesus, the disciples took his advice. Almost immediately they felt that the net was full. They could not draw it into the boat. The previous empty net was filled with an abundant catch of fish. Jesus provided what the human efforts could not. They toiled. They were fishermen. They knew how to fish. And they worked the whole night, but they could not. But Jesus was able to provide them with the fish they needed. Now, a similar instance happened uh, in Luke chapter 5. Uh, when they came to be disciples, Jesus said, Go a little deeper and throw your net. And they could not haul, the, they called friends and then they hauled the fish. A similar thing happened. So, initially, in the initial days, when it happened, they called the partners and then they all came together and they pulled out the fish. And uh, Peter knew this was not an ordinary thing because he being a fisherman knew what was happening. Something miraculous has happened in that place. So he went and told Jesus, 
in that instance, go away from me, I am a sinner. He could feel, he knew that he was in the presence of an Almighty God and he knew that he had his shortcoming. So he said, please go away from me. But in this instance we see, uh, when uh, they caught the fish, um, the, this, uh, John told Peter, it is the Lord, the, the disciple whom uh, Lord, the Lord Jesus loved, said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, uh, towing, towing uh, the net full of fish. For they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Here we see Peter running towards Jesus. The last time when this miracle, when a similar miracle happened, he said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinner. But this time he ran towards Jesus. He knew Jesus better. So he was running, perhaps. Uh, John recalled an earlier life changing event three years earlier. John is, uh, it, it was the instance, the same instance uh, uh, referred in Luke after a long night when Jesus told them uh, where to fish, the nets broke and the boats began to sink under the weight of the miraculous catch of fish. The men pulled to the shore, left the boats and followed Jesus from that day forward. Probably something is they are reminded of. The disciples' previous experience set the context for this one. Peter, upon hearing John's exclamation, immediately jumped in and went to be with the Lord. He swam and went uh, towards the Lord until he reached the shore. All that mattered to Peter was being near Jesus. Now he did not want to go away, he wanted to be close to Jesus. That's all he wanted. The remaining disciples followed in the boat. They towed, towed the uh, heavy, unbroken net. It was a miracle that such heavy, they, they had 153 fishes, but the net did not break. That was an amazing uh, miracle too, that the net did not break with the amount of fish they had caught. Landing on the shore, uh, the disciples saw a fire of burning coals with fish cooking on it and some bread. The Gospels record a similar fire some time back. There was a fire which was happening in the night and people were around it uh, in the a few days back when Peter denied Jesus in the, in the high priest's courtyard. There was a fire for, because it was cold at the night. They were warming themselves by a fireside. Maybe Peter was, uh, fire, the fire reminded Peter of the most painful night and prepared him for Jesus' words recorded later in this chapter. With the aroma of the fire cooked fish in the air, Jesus called the men, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Peter returned to the boat and helped drag the heavy net ashore, despite the weight of 153, there were 153 uh, large fish in the, in the net. The net was not broken at all. John's accounting of the exact number of fish verifies his presence as an eyewitness. So John was there verifying it. Jesus called to the men to come and have breakfast. Though the disciples recognized Jesus, none of them sought confirmation. This time they did not come and ask him, are you showing me your hands or your side? No. They knew it was Jesus. Um, understanding his resurrected state by asking him the question, who are you? They didn't ask him that. As he fed them fish and bread, they remembered a prior miracle including bread and fish. They probably uh, thought about the bread and fish, the five loaves and the two fishes, 
where the small boy brought it to Jesus and he multiplied it and gave it to them. Probably they were reminded of that. We can only imagine the conversation they had around the, around the fire. The scene portrays the third appearance of the risen Christ to the disciples in John's Gospel. They would soon carry God's work after Jesus ascended into heaven. Their experience reinforced the stabilizing security and comfort only Jesus can offer. Surely the seaside breakfast perhaps uh, prepared them to recognize they needed Jesus' presence at all times. When he was not physically, even when he was not physically in their midst, Jesus showed these men his desire to satisfy his servants with his presence. Jesus brings ultimate satisfaction to all who call him their Lord and Savior. He wants to be near them. He wants to be near you. And he provides you when all your uh, strong strengths fail. He can provide. They were fishermen. They were strong in their area, line of fishing, but they could not catch with their own. But then Jesus provided a miracle for them. Jesus can provide a, provide a miracle for you too. He can do that. He is the God who is the same yesterday, today and forever. The God who provided for uh, the disciples when they could not do it on their own strength. Sometimes we, we try doing it on our own strength and we find we are fruitless. Nothing seems to be coming. At that point of time, Jesus does a miracle. Throw your net on the other side, on the right side, and then it happened. Jesus can do the same miracle to you also. On the night Jesus arrest, when Jesus was arrested, Peter had boasted before all the disciples that he, uh, or even if all the others fall away, he will never fall. He went to the extent of saying, that he would, even if he dies, he will not deny him. But Jesus warned Peter that far from remaining faithful, he would deny Jesus three times that very night. Jesus said, told him. Peter rejected Jesus' words and claimed he would, before he, he would die before he disowned Jesus. That were his very words. The other disciples joined in the same way and uh, took the same vow. Later, the uh, same night, Peter denied Jesus three times. Jesus knew that Peter, rightly humbled by his failure, needed personal and public affirmation to move forward. He needed personal and public affirmation to move forward. As Jesus had predicted, Peter failed. He denied him three times. Now, Jesus offered three opportunities to reaffirm love and commitment. Full of mercy and grace, Jesus restored Peter, preparing him to carry as a leader of Jesus' apostles and the early church. Imagine Peter's emotion as Jesus' attention turned towards Peter's recent experience denying Jesus certainly loomed large. Jesus asked a well-aimed question. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? What was Jesus asking Peter? Did Peter love Jesus more than the other disciples did? Did his love for Jesus exceed his love for fishing? He had earlier boasted of his superior devotion. What were Jesus meant? He deeply pierced the heart of Peter. He touched his heart. Jesus asked Peter this question twice. Both times Peter said, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Peter's simple response no longer claimed superiority over the others. Yeah. Especially his disciples. Hearing his confession of love, Jesus exhorted Peter to feed his lambs and to take care of his sheep. The first time he said, feed my lambs. The second time he said, take care of my sheep. 
uh, he asked the uh, third time and the final time, Jesus asked Peter if he loved him. Once confident of his own love, zeal and life. Now Peter painfully realizes the weakness of his uh, imagined strength. He knew that Jesus intimately and accurately discerned the hidden truth about his fainting heart. Peter humbly replied, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. He still says, yes, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you too. Two Greek words used for love in the New Testament are agape and filio. Agape is often considered as a higher love, that is sacrificial love. While filio refers to the brotherly or affections between siblings. John seems to use the two Greek words interchangeably in his writing. Therefore, the importance of different usages in 15 to 17 may be regarded as minimal. For example, John used both Greek words to refer to himself as the disciples whom Jesus loved. In this conversation, John used agape in the first two questions and filio is used for Jesus' third question and all of Peter's responses. This was all in Greek. In Aramaic, possibly the original language of this conversation, there is no distinction in the use of the word for love. Most probably Jesus and Peter spoke in Aramaic. So it was just love, the word love. But yes, when it was translated into Greek, they had so many options and probably they used, but the word love was used in Aramaic. There is only one word for love. In three successive responses, Jesus commissioned Peter to lead the lead and nurture his people, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, and then he said, feed my sheep. These indicate Peter's future role of a leader for Christ, Christ's cause. God can use flawed people in his plan because they depend on his power and strength, not their own. Those who love Jesus serve him by serving others. He, there was a reconciliation which took place at this point. The reconciliation describes the process by which part, parties at odds with each other are restored and brought back together again. We need to be reconciled to God because our sin separated us from Him. In His grace, God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to bear the sins and the penalty of the sins on our behalf and on Peter's behalf also. Through sin, those sin blocks humanity's fellowship with God. God, Jesus removed sin's curse when he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. Without Jesus we remain, we are apart from God, placed under his wrath and face nothing but his just condemnation. Like Peter, we can be reconciled to God. We, we are called by God to care for his sheep and be his agents of reconciliation for others to come and know as Peter was. Believers can share the greatest news of all time, the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. To reject this reconciliation is to utter hopelessness and eternal peril to reject this. Without Jesus intervention, without his intervening on our behalf, we remain enemies of God. No human effort can bridge the gap between God and man. Sinful people, the gap between sinful people and a holy God is too vast for man to just go on the other side. Only Jesus can reconcile us to God. Accepting Christ's work on the cross brings peace that surpasses all understanding and brings peace between man and God. Though we stumble like Peter, 
Jesus has borne the punishment for our sin and offers the way of repentance and restoration. We long for the way, the day we see Jesus face to face. We long for it and no longer endure sin, sorrow or tears. Jesus reconciled Peter to himself and does the same for us. Our reconciliation solely rests on Jesus and his completed work on the cross. He calls us to follow him with repentant hearts and receive his sacrifice on our behalf. Follow him with repentant hearts and receive his sacrifices. Sacrifice on our behalf. His victory becomes our victory. He wants us. After saying everything, Jesus says, follow to Peter, follow me. He says the same to us, follow me. Though the journey direct may include suffering or pain, following Jesus to it and through it is always the right way to be. One day Peter would willingly stretch out. Jesus also foretells about the death of Peter. He says, one day you will go to a place where you don't want to go and they'll stretch you out. He says, uh, says, feed my sheep. Uh, and I tell you, when you were young, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Then he says, Jesus, uh, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death which Peter would do. And then he says, follow me. Peter, Peter then had one question. He looked at Jesus and looked at uh, uh, John following him this, and he says, what about him, Lord? Jesus said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? He's trying to compare. He's saying, what, what happens to him? He says, so some people thought, because he said this, that he will never die. But he said, but John made it very clear in his writings, in his gospel saying, if I want to him to remain alive until I return, so he makes it very clear that he was not going to live forever. So in this passage, what do we see? One is we find when we become insufficient or when we are not able to uh, do things with our own strength, our self-sufficiency probably did not help the disciples. Sometimes we are confused, we are weary, we are empty handed just like the disciples. What does trusting God to provide what you need look like for you? God knows where you are and what you need most. God knows everything. And He has a great purpose for us and that than a carefree life. What Jesus desires for you far exceeds what we can supply for ourselves. Jesus knows our needs. Jesus knows where our shortcoming. Jesus knows when we are empty handed and he will take care of you. What about past, far, past failures which haunt you? Peter's story offers hope. The same man who denied Jesus in the courtyard now has become the leader. Jesus reconciled with him. He spoke to him and then he sorted him out. God can use your failures as a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block. Peter's past was marked by frailty and his future by suffering. Jesus allowed Peter to verbalize him, his love for him, called Peter to selfless service and reminded Peter to follow where he led. God never leaves his beloved children stuck in a place of shame. How will you trust God to bring fruit from your failures? 
maybe you are fallen down, maybe you are in, in a spot and thinking what you can do. But the same God who did for Peter will be able to do for you. And God, and focus on your path. Everybody is unique. God has his own path for each one of us. Let's not look around and compare with each other. Each one has a built unique. And uh, he will take you through. So today, if you are empty handed, look to the Lord Jesus Christ. The God who provided for the disciples will provide for you. If you are not reconciled with Christ, come back because he's asking you to follow him. Follow me, says Jesus. Come to Jesus and follow him and be reconciled just as Peter was so that you could also reconcile others to Christ. And the last one is don't look around and compare yourself with others. Look to Jesus who has called you. He is the path for you. Go on that path so that his name can be glorified. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word. Thank you for the encounter with Peter you had and the disciples. Thank you because you provided for them. Provide for your people, oh Father. I pray for people who are not reconciled, that they will come to, they will be reconciled with you, O oh Master, so that they will not face eternal judgment, O oh Master. I also pray for people who are comparing with others, that they would look to you and be led of you, O oh Father, because you have a unique path for each one of them. Bless them and use them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you till we meet again next week. Thank you.